Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today here in Yerevan is Tom DeWall, who is an acknowledged expert, I would say a rare acknowledged expert internationally as well as in the region, uh, about the region, about the Caucasus region, whether it's Georgia, whether it's Chechnya, whether it's the Karapakh conflict, which of course involves Azerbaijan and Armenia, whether it's the Karapakhs themselves, and in many ways also Russia and the region. Tom, welcome. Yeah, great to be here. Um, in all of your various hats and capacities, we ask you to pull out the crystal ball. And I know that in previous conversations, including here at CivilNet with Tatul, you know, you've talked about where the key to the, uh, the resolution of the Gharapakh conflict is. Is it in Moscow, perhaps? I want to ask a different question. I want to say that given how the Armenian-Turkish issues, closed border as well as historical issues, genocide recognition and such. All of that has been now so inextricably entwined, it seems, mm -hmm. with Gharapal resolution processes. Is it not fair to say that in some ways the key to the Gharapal <coughs> solution is really in Ankara? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I would begin by saying what I've said all the way along, that of course the key is in, in the region. Um, First of all, that, that you know, it, ha it has to come from Azerbaijanis, Armenians, um, people of Karabakh. I mean, that's the first thing that has to be said. And until there, you can't want peace for for other people more than they want it themselves. They have to, they have to want it. But clearly, they, I, I see, you know, that this this conflict has become a prison for, you know, it's holding back both Armenians and Azerbaijanis Absolutely. For, from moving forward, and and they're, they're trapped by this conflict and. And, you know, and all of the rhetoric of uh, yeah, and, and myths and, and, and sort of end up digging themselves deeper sure. in, in, into this conflict. So who the, so the question then becomes we're not talking about kind of we're not we're not in 1913 we're not talking about great power diplomacy where you convene a conference in a European capital and the Armenians and Azerbaijanis are peace is made for them and the, the great powers divide up spheres and we're not talking about that but we're talking about a more kind of active Diplomacy in which uh, the great powers use leverage that they have um, with the parties and on the ground, and and you know they take some pain themselves in, in order for in the name of a greater good, which is for Armenians and Azerbaijanis to make peace. And Azerbaijani and Armenian sovereignty is, is not reduced by this, but enhanced by this. So this, so this, this is the kind of that's the theory. That's, okay. the, that's the theory. So the question then becomes um, Moscow, Ankara, Washington. EU, um, and certainly I would see that, that if, if we're looking at that model, which is obviously rather a, a, you know, a utopian model, absolutely Ankara has many cards to play. It has influence in Baku, which it generally doesn't use. Um, most of the influence the seems, seems to be going the other way. But I mean, if, the Tur if Turkey made up its mind, it, it, could, it could be using it the other way. And it obviously has a huge um, lever with the with Armenia with with the border and, and so on. Does it is the border still a lever for anyone and resist? Is the border still a lever? Well, I think it is. Yeah, in the sense that I think um, that changes a lot psychologically when that border opens for Armenia. Um, but it's it, not a negative lever then. If it opens, it could become a positive lever. Yeah, well, but but at the moment it's it's negative, and and so lifting it becomes positive, and, and of course, um, the situation we're in is that is that there's conditionality on on, on lifting it, um, whether we like it or not. So, um, you know, in that sense, um, um, although everyone goes around saying these two processes aren't linked, as as you say, as long as they're linked in the minds of, of Turkish politicians, they're linked. And Azerbaijani. I mean, as long as those two consider it linked. Um, sitting in Washington, the think tanks, these you know, observers, knowledgeable observers following what's happening in Turkey. Um, for a long time, we thought the democratic processes in Turkey, at the end of the day, were going to benefit Armenia-Turkey relations. Uh, I still would like to believe that. At the same time, as we watch what is happening in Turkey's larger cities, the, the disconnect that seems to be between so many factions mm -hmm. of Turkish society and the leadership, uh, the increased tensions there. At the same time, the efforts at rapprochement with the 
Kurdish mm -hmm. population. In all of that, is Armenia going to be, Armenian-Turkish relations, is that going to be part of the tale, you know, that just gets kind of dragged along? Or is this the issue that is less important than the others and so off it'll go again, off the agenda? I don't think it, it, can, it can go off, off the agenda. Um, you know, it still looms large in the presence, in the minds of Turkish diplomats who you know, have to deal with um, April 24th and, and issues. And it's also, in, but I think, and this is possibly um, more important, it's also important because um, it blocks Turkish uh, influence in the Caucasus as a whole, which in, in, in turn um, you know, blocks, it, it's an impediment to Turkish trade and Turkish trade to Central Asia and the Caspian and Russia as well. So it, it, it certainly, that's, that's a factor. And there's also, I think, the intellectual factor that as, if, as, a, as the country is emerging from its kind of Kemalist deep mm -hmm. freeze, it's considering its past and, you know, and normal educated Turks are asking themselves the question, so what happened to all those Armenians who used to live here um, and why haven't I been told about it and I want to learn. And so it becomes a question about your own past, about uh, honoring the past and, and so on. So all those things are still there. Now, of course, that's a longer term process. Um, what's happening in the short term is very contradictory. I mean, you know, and, and you know, fascinating, uh, absolutely fascinating. And I was in Istanbul watching the whole uh, Gezi Park thing. I was, I happened to arrive 12 hours the whole, whole thing kicked Blew off up, completely you know. by coincidence, obviously, although, <laughs> although Edouan blames um, foreign provocateurs. Yes, yes, that would be um, you and your colleagues. Exactly. But, um, and so there are kind of positives and negatives there that, that, that um, um, the Turkish middle class is now woken up and has found a voice. Um, but obviously the negative is that there's resistance from Edouan, who's, who's you know, really showing a very nasty side to his personality in, 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 and, and to his views in, in the way that he's faced that down. But simultaneously, I think one thing that's also held him back a bit is, is the fact that suddenly a fear that he might lose that Kurdish opening. That's really and, and then the, So I think the, the player to watch here is the Kurdish party, it's the BDP, which in a sense is now, that is now forget about the CHP, the old opposition, the, old, old opposition. the BHP, the Kurdish party, really holds, it's, it's the kind of, they were the, the link to the PKK, and they've also, they have this kind of rather ambiguous attitude to demonstrations, a bit involved, but sort of they wait don't and see. want their game disrupted. But on the other hand, after a while they said, this is, we don't like this, this, you know, um, don't, this language is, is also threatening us and it's threatening um, the opening. And so I think there's an interesting game being played out there in which Erdogan knows that um, he can't lose that, that his uh, Kurdish opening, and therefore he has to be a bit careful um, about, he doesn't want to completely alienate that party as well. And I think, so I think um, Something. Ar Armenians can in a sense hang on, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's not a very dignified posture, but hang on a bit to the coattails of the Kurds. Um, um, and of course there's an interesting parallel process, which is a Kurdish-Armenian thing, and of course the most progressive city in, in Turkey when it comes to the Armenian cause is, is, is Diyarbakir. So, so all those things are going on, and um, so it yeah. gives, you know, it, it's, it's not a very comfortable position for the Armenians to be in, but all, but all lots of balls are flying yeah. around in the air. At the same time, of course, they're also playing. I mean, Turkish, Kurdish parliamentarians were at the very beginning of this rapprochement process saying, yeah, well, you know, it wasn't us that did all those terrible things in 1915. It was them or they made us or something. So it's, it's really complex. You said something in passing that really, I think, in many ways is the crux of this unsolvable thing between Armenia and Turkey. And that is that in Armenia, when we talk about Armenia-Turkey, really we say border first. I think most of us recognizing that genocide recognition will come when the Turkish democratic processes get it there. In Turkey, when they talk Armenian-Turkish Armenian issues, it's, you know, genocide recognition, 2015 is looming, you know, what will we do with, you know, some of these other noises? Because there are skeletons in the closet, their first issue is that, and ours is, I think, 
the border. Well, certainly officially it is. Um, and therein lies this, this disconnect. Mm. So when you say they're talking about, of course, you know, April 24th issues are coming up and of course their t Turkish diplomats and others are paying attention. We really want them to be paying attention to the here and now mm. so that those other issues can be easier to resolve. Mm. How do we get them there? How does the international community get them there? The here, the now, the comparatively right. painless one. Well, I mean, I think in, a, in that sense, it probably wasn't helpful for, to say the ball is completely in the Turkish court, because if the ball is completely in the Turkish court and, and Turkey doesn't, doesn't want to look play. at, doesn't want to play, then everything is stuck. So I think there are, um, from the Armenian side, you know, there should be some more efforts to come up with ideas. We're not surrendering our positions, we, we believe this, but we want to talk to you, try and keep up the, the contact, remind, exist and remind the Armenians that we remind the Turks that, you know, this is something that we care about and we want, and, and these are our positions, but let's keep open the channel. And then of course, you know, it's all about, unfortunately, it's all, it's, we get back to Karabakh, the big, you know, which sucks all, everything. Um, everything. In um, an essay I wrote recently, I used the metaphor from the Harry Potter books where there's the Dementor who sucks life yeah. and memory and everything good out of the situation. Karabakh is like that. Um, so, you know, so let's, let's throw out another idea. Well, how about um, the Turks and the Russians should be, should be sitting in a room and saying, is there something we can do coordinated on, on Karabakh? I know that, that would... If there was good faith? Yeah, but I don't know that there is good faith. So just the thought of that, you can imagine, would make Armenians cringe. On the other hand, they certainly are part of the formula, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Uh, and, and in your explanation, Ladapov is the sticking point, that's putting it mildly, for the Armenia-Turkey processes to move forward. And Armenians would say, if Armenia-Turkey processes moved forward, that would make the Ladapov resolution easier. Yeah. And so it's completely looking at things through different windows. Yeah, and I think there's a certain, I mean, you must feel this too, there's, there's a certain, there's a lack of creativity here because there are certain things that, sh that, that could be done where you can, you can finesse this. You can say, of course they're not linked, but they're just happening in parallel and they're just sort of two dominoes which, which might hit each other and, and, and fall down. You know, I've, I've suggested, why don't we look at Nahichivan? Why don't we look at restoring the railway through Nahichivan? And, and, and of course, it's a, that's a thing which, which should benefit everybody, as there is sure. Armenians, Nahichivanis, and Turks. Um, and, um, you know, okay, the Armenian side, for, for reasons that we understand, rejects the idea of giving up a rayon um, in return for some Turkish rapprochement, but, you in know, the Karabakh conflict. In, in Karabakh conflict. But, you know, let's think of this, isn't there another way we can repackage that? Could it be this, this rayon comes under an, a new UN international mandate? Let's just come up with some brainstorm with some ideas. And what, I, what, what depresses me is that this, um, the Minsk group is now chasing around discussing shall we change this word in paragraph three when talking about very, very small topics. Um, no one, the two sides aren't meeting. They don't even have special envoys, you know, whatever happened to the Gulazar de Labridian track. Why aren't the two um, envoys meeting in a room in Geneva or Tbilisi over a drink and, and brainstorming this together? This, you know, everything because the over the drink mood is missing. <laughs> exactly. because it's not yeah. as if there are no people, but that even minimal good right. faith seems no longer to be there. But, the, but this is precisely the moment when you need to be talking more. Right. Well, on that, is that a hopeful note? I don't know <laughs> what that was, but on that note, Tom DeWall, author of the newly reissued Black Garden, uh, talks with us at CivilNet, not just about Arapal, but also about Armenia Turkey, because at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, that's what this has become. And thank you for following the issue, and right. we look forward to talking to you right. again. Thanks, Sophie. And thank you for following us on CivilNet.